Hey, my name's Casey Ellis. I'm the founder, chairman, CTO of Bug Crowd. Uh, I've got Bo here with me today, and we're going to talk about Cybersecurity Awareness Month and the stuff that CISA is doing with the, uh, the Security Summit. Bo, do you want to introduce yourself, mate? Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm Bo Woods. I am a uh, COVID CARES Act hire for the US Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Uh, we look out for, uh, as is implied in the name, a lot of the cybersecurity and infrastructure security uh, throughout both the federal government, uh, as well as the American private sector and some of our international partners as well. Awesome. So yeah, you and I, you and I catch up on a fairly regular basis, just talking about what all's going on. Um, and obviously this, the summit's been constructed, I think, to kind of capture that. Um, yeah. Can you give us kind of an idea of, of what all is happening over the, uh, over the next month out of, out of the summit itself? And yeah, talk about the, uh, the interview that y'all did the other day. Yeah, yeah sure. So, uh, the CISA Cybersecurity Summit this year is going to be broken up into four days across four weeks. So people are getting a little bit of Zoom fatigue uh, and, and webinar fatigue. So yeah. we're going to have, uh, have people sit down for shorter time periods throughout the month. Also to kind of keep a heartbeat going of just uh, making sure it's, it's present in people's minds um, and give them content as the month goes on. Uh, the first week, which is coming up, uh, October 6th um, is on the vulnerability management ecosystem. And this is soup to nuts across uh, all, pro all, all pieces of the ecosystem, all the way from vulnerability disclosure uh, and the bug finders, which is what I'll be talking about, yep. uh, all the way through to you know things like um, CVEs, uh, the common vulnerability enumeration uh, schema, the way that we classify and categorize bugs to bad practices. What are some things that are just objectively bad uh, following along some of CIS's uh, most recent publications? Um, how do you do vulnerability disclosure in cloud? Uh, how do you manage vulnerabilities in cloud? Which is a really interesting topic uh, that started to get a lot of attention lately. And then of course, uh, uh, talking about the supply chain, the, the much deeper dive look um, how can one vulnerability affect uh, hundreds or even thousands of applications, systems, uh, organizations across the globe? Um, and then in the subsequent weeks, we're going to focus on workforce development. You know, what does it take to build a cyber workforce? Um, collective defense uh, and how to build partnerships. And I don't want to give you too much uh, insight into what those are going to be. You're going to have to tune in later, so uh, on, later on this month. To check them out yeah i mean that's that's an awesome you know they're all subjects that i know are near to dear near and dear to your heart and, and definitely for, for myself as well um all of them like the workforce development um side of it right through to, to ppp and how all that works um yeah you and i were talking about the uh i guess the uh, the relationship between the hacker community and and you know governments and, and corporations um how it's it's gone. It's sort of the unlikely romance is, is one of the, uh, the the terms that I use to to describe it because it's a little bit like dogs and cats getting along together. But you know, functionally, this is a conversation that really needs to happen um, and has needed to happen for a long time. That's just starting to find its legs and, and figure out ways to work. So the interview that you did, uh, which I believe goes to air on the the sixth of October, is that right? Um, sixth yeah, of October that, at one, just after one p.m. Eastern. We got a uh, we're going to let uh, Jen do a keynote. Uh, Jen is still the director of awesome. uh, uh, CISA. Uh, she's going to give a keynote. And then right after that, we're going to jump in and talk about the relationship between hackers as bug finders and the rest of the ecosystem, whether it's CISA coordinating vulnerability disclosures or uh, companies receiving reports of vulnerabilities or, uh, you know, in some cases, state, local, territorial, tribal receiving vulnerabilities, like with uh, Ohio and Iowa who have uh, secretaries of state have a coordinated vulnerability disclosure program for things like yep. election systems. Yeah, definitely. For sure. So, so the, uh, the interview, um, particularly uh, the, that I, that I had in mind was, was uh, you know, by crowd's own Katie Paxton fear uh, inside of PhD and then space rogue who's of you know, loft fame uh, and definitely has been around and, and doing this whole thing for, for a long time. Tell us about that a little bit, if you can, like without giving away, you know, having us tune into, yeah. into the interview itself, but some of the, um, I guess, you know, things that, uh, that popped out of, of seeing kind of the new breed and, and you know, the, uh, the older breed communicate and talk, talk all the stuff through. 
Yeah, I mean, it was really interesting to watch somebody who's just joined the hacker community in the last five years with somebody who's been around for 25 years, literally testifying in front of Congress in 1998. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the vast differences and distinctions between the way that uh, the world used to work in our world of vulnerability finders, reporters, disclosers, and the way that it works now and how much the, the pathway has been paved by some of those older generation of folks, uh, and I would include you uh, certainly among that. Not that I'm calling you old. No, um, no it's fine. But uh, my, my kids do it. So who, you can't do it. It's fine. <laughs> people who have built those pathways to make it more acceptable, to make it easier, um, to to generate a little bit of empathy and understanding among the uh, business uh, and among the government crowd for um, the need for security research for security <laughs> researchers to take help from uh, kind of friendly hackers who report things and disclose them in good faith in order to get them fixed. Uh, yeah. And that was a fascinating discussion to watch those two talk. Uh, and the not just generational shift, but the, uh, the shift in, in mindset too of um, some of the hackers, some of the security researchers, expectations uh, of what it means and, and how they're continually now pushing the envelope to get better uh, technically, but also get better at uh, creating those uh, dialogues and conversations and yeah. really generating trust. Yeah, absolutely. I think like trust um, and, and that whole idea of like empathy for the, for the business on, on the finder side, like seeing, you know, particularly the newer breed that come in um, that are, you know, standing on the shoulders of people like, like Chris, who you've got on, on, the, uh, on, on the panel tomorrow. Yeah, really cultivating that empathy to actually understand what the nature of the problem that we're solving looks like. It's not just the vulnerabilities and systems and, and the things that we're able to find that make us tick from a computer science standpoint. It's actually this broader picture of, you know, why the target organization exists in the first place. Like, how do we make the internet more secure? All those different aspects of it. So that's, that's very cool. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's something that's, that's very near and dear to, to my heart working a lot in healthcare is... You know, the understanding that um, this is not a vulnerability, this is uh, a patient's road to recovery from disease or their road to uh, a, a better quality of life. And how can that vulnerability um, be critically important uh, to that device uh, and, and get reported in a way that doesn't erode either the trustworthiness of the device, so you don't give you know, too much information to adversaries before it can be fixed. Of course. Uh, yeah. And also doesn't erode trust and confidence in the system so that people might be afraid to take help from the best possible capabilities uh, in a way that, um, that sets back health and public health, right? Individual health and public health. Uh, and I think that that some of those conversations are really fascinating. And as we get more into critical infrastructure vulnerabilities and coordinating disclosure of those, uh, we have to think beyond just the dynamic between the researcher and the company or the product, uh, and also think about the other people in the ecosystem, the, the stakeholders that you might not think about, somebody who's way downstream of this, but who may be a beneficiary of the security research or potentially put at risk uh, if the security research doesn't get um, disclosed uh, and worked in a in a way that that looks out for all of those various different equities, yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's it's an interesting. I think that <clears throat> that dynamic that you're talking about that's something that we that we saw <clears throat> and that we continue to be a part of, uh, you know, within within Bug Crowd um, with respect to election security. You know, this idea of of neighborhood watch for the internet being a thing that's that. that um, yeah, there's not a lot in cybersecurity that you can do to defend yourself that a layperson can understand. But if you talk about neighborhood watch for the internet, all of a sudden you've got a story and you've got something that you're doing that can engender confidence and trust. And you know, if you've got things like healthcare or critical infrastructure or even you know the the integrity of democracy itself at stake, it becomes a pretty useful solution at that point. It does. And I think if we frame the conversations in those ways, it starts to become more apparent why we need to have independent security researchers, yeah. why we need to have uh, robust systems and robust norms and expectations for how uh, a vulnerability gets discovered 
uh, reported, coord you know, the fixes yeah, coordinated, yeah. rolled out to everybody, disclosed so that we can be better. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, to, to round this out, um, you know, one of the questions I've been thinking about, and, and I'll probably ask a few people throughout the course of the month, you know, this idea of the focus on, on consumer, you know, it's almost like civil defense from, from like a cyber safety and cyber hygiene standpoint. That's, that's a lot of the focus of, of cybersecurity awareness month. Um, you know, for organizations uh, that are trying to think about how to help their users do that better, you know, what's, what's the takeaway for them at this point from, from, your, from your standpoint? If there's one thing they can be thinking about through the course of the month, yeah. what, what is that thing? Yeah, I'd say there's a couple of things. Um, number one, corporations are people too. Uh, they're made up of people. People buy things. And as they buy things, they become more aware of security signals. And so people who would traditionally be in an organization and maybe not be a savvy security buyer, they're starting to perk up. They're starting to realize that security has to be a part of the conversation because they're seeing that on their phones at home. They're seeing that on their home IoT devices and it's really affecting them. And so they're gonna to start to bring some of those mindsets and expectations into their corporate buying environment. Um, and then I'd say, uh, you know, secondly, corporations are buyers too, right? They, they oftentimes will buy things that would ordinarily be a, you know, a B to C business to consumer play um, companies will go out and buy, you know, a hundred IOT, um, camera devices so that they can put them on their network and, uh, and make sure that their physical security is protected. Um, and so it kind of goes both ways, right? I think we're going to see a cross pollination of, um, consumer attitudes start to be more pervasive inside corporations and the need for consumer level technology, uh, at least to hit a certain scale. Uh, to have the kinds of capabilities that corporations will expect in terms of security and protections. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's, I, I think you hit on a point that I couldn't agree with more. The, the idea that the consumer, you know, at this point in time is, is very acutely aware of, of cybersecurity as a risk to them personally. And, you know, you and I have both been in this space for a couple of decades now. So I'm calling you old too at this point. <laughs> that wasn't always true. So now we're in this position where there's this kind of you know heat under the pot on the buyer side of things. Um, and I would argue they're also getting a little weary of hearing that we take your security seriously. Now, now the question is, well, show me. Like, how, how are you actually doing that? You know, what are the things that I can see that make me more confident as a consumer in your product versus the others that I've got a, got a choice to, to actually purchase at this point in time? Yeah, I do see where the role of the researcher comes into this is, is this idea of transparency and neighborhood watch and the idea of, you know, almost like to err as human, like, yeah, we're going to assume that there will be issues. So like, let's set that up in place to be able to catch those quickly when it does happen, identify them, fix them, and then learn and get better from, from the entire process. That's something that the, uh, the consumer is starting to understand, I think. Yeah, I would tend to agree and, and expect more. You know, as we get more sophisticated as people on thinking about security, we get more sophisticated in what we expect from the th products that we buy. Absolutely. All right, Bo, well, thank you so much for your time, mate. Uh, you know, good luck with the, uh, the Q&A and all the, all the different things going on with the, uh, the conference. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for all the work you put into the, uh, the community and even putting all this content together. I think, you know, this education aspect and all the work that CISA does it's fantastic. We're stoked to, to partner with y'all uh, from, from Bug Crowd and great to chat. Great. Thank you. Cheers, mate.